Welcome to this quick start introduction tutorial for V-Ray for Rhino. In this video, we take a look at rendering a product design in V-Ray for Rhino and how to get productive rendering in no time. Open the scene file single earphone 2.3dm found in the downloaded assets from the tutorials webpage linked below. Now, once you have V-Ray for Rhino installed, you'll want to switch from the Rhino renderer to V-Ray by going to the Render menu, Current Renderer, and select V-Ray for Rhino. A floating toolbar appears that you can dock into the Rhino UI. The toolbar is divided into four tabs. The main tab gives access to the Asset Editor, a couple of render icons, show the V-Ray frame buffer or VFB icon, and edit materials icon. We have a tab for adding lights, V-Ray objects like an infinite plane or fur, and a couple of extra tools. In the main tab, open the asset editor. This is the nerve center for V-Ray for Rhino. The asset editor is divided into four sections. The materials, which allow you to create and edit all the V-Ray materials in the scene, as well as see a material preview here in this box. Next is the Lights tab that gives you access to any lights in the scene. Then V-Ray Geometry tab to add items in the scene such as fur. And the last tab is Settings to adjust your render settings. Here you can show the VFB with its icon or launch production or interactive renders from here. Click this icon to start an interactive render and it appears in the VFB. Making adjustments in the scene will update interactively in the VFB. In the Asset Editor, go to the Materials tab. You can click the Add Material button to add a new material to the scene. Select Generic. Right-click on the material to bring up a number of things you can do from applying the material to copying and pasting it to renaming it and so on. Double-clicking the name also allows you to rename that material. Name this material Chord, as we'll be using this for the earbuds Chord. Select the Chord, right-click on the Chord material, and choose Apply Material to Selection. You can see the VFB update to a gray chord. Click on the Quick Settings tab, and we'll get to work making this look right. This tab shows the core parameters for the material to make editing easier, as well as a drop-down menu here, so you can simply select the settings from any of these preset material types. Now select plastic from the list. The preview updates as does the chord in the interactive render, and we can change any of its parameters to suit our needs. Make diffuse color a brighter gray. Adjust the reflection down a bit, and set the glossiness to 0.85 to diffuse our reflections a little bit in that plastic. Now check this out. If you click this arrow, you'll see the material library expand out to the left. There are several categories of materials shown here. Select metal if it isn't already, and in the list of materials, find and click on the silver blurry material, and go ahead and drag it over to the material list like so. Select this ring geometry of the earbud, and right click to apply this new silver material. Click on the Quick Settings tab and reduce the reflection value, and you can see it update here in the VFB. Now, scroll up in the list of metal materials in the library and select the Metallic Foil Green and drag it into the material list. Select the Accent Rings Geometry in the earbud and assign the green metal to that. Select the Plastic category now and find the Plastic Simple Shiny Black material and drag that into the material list. Select the front earbud geometry and assign this black material to it. Scroll up a bit and drag Plastic Simple Grain S Black into the material list and apply it to the housing of the earbud. Notice that the frequency of the texture on this rough plastic is a little bit too large. Click on Quick Settings tab and scroll down to the Bump parameter. Click on the Map icon to edit the bump map that is giving us this texture. Set the frequency to 30 and we get a more natural texture on that plastic part. Back to the material list to get something for this large part of the earbud. Scroll down to find Plastic SSS03 Green. This has subsurface scattering in the material that will give us a nice silicone look. 
drag it into the material list and assign it to the geometry. Close the material library and let's move on to lighting in the lights tab. In the V-Ray toolbar, click this icon for a dome light, which will surround your scene in light, and then click here to place the dome light in the scene. Now immediately, a file dialog appears asking for an HDR or high dynamic range image for the dome light. Navigate to the furdeskspherical.hdr file found in the downloaded assets for this tutorial and click open. This places an HDRI panorama as an environmental light in the scene, and the interactive render shows this. Click this arrow to expand out the settings for the light. Adjust the intensity value to 2 to give us a bit more illumination in the scene. Expand the options and turn on invisible so that the HDR does not show up in the render and then collapse the options in the asset editor. Now select the dome light and go to your top view in Rhino. Rotate the dome light to adjust the lighting direction in the scene until you find a result that you're happy with. I'll set mine about here and then I'll go back to the single view. In the asset editor, go to the settings section to tweak our render settings. Open the camera rollout and adjust the exposure value to 8 to allow more light into the camera, making the render brighter. Next, enable depth of field. Click the pick focal point button here and in the scene, click on this part of your earbud model to set the focus of the camera there. Now you can adjust the defocus value as you see fit for the image. I'll set mine to 0.35. Open the render output section and let's change this to a square image. Select the aspect ratio pull down menu and choose 1 to 1 square. You can input your own aspect ratio by choosing custom, but I'll set mine to be square. Now whatever resolution you put into the width will adjust for the height and vice versa. I'll put in 640. This does require me to stop the current interactive render in the VFB with the stop button here and to restart a new one. You can see the subtle blurring here from depth of field and the nice texture on this rough plastic with this larger render. Now expand the environment rollout so we can put in a backdrop for the render that won't provide illumination beyond the dome light that we already have. Click on the swatch here and you'll see that by default, it points to a default Rhino HDR image, which I'm going to replace. Click here to select a new image and navigate to background.jpg, found in the downloaded assets for this tutorial. This map automatically comes in as UVW Gen Environment with a spherical mapping type, which is good for HDR dome images but not for flat backdrops like this JPEG. Set this value to screen and the image comes in nicely. Now if you have network rendering enabled with Swarm, go ahead and enable that now as we prepare to start a final render. Swarm is a way to distribute rendering across a network of render machines to speed up rendering, but you don't need this at all to render the scene out of Rhino. In the VFB, stop the interactive render and in the asset editor, turn off interactive. Set your quality to high and launch a production render with this icon. I'll elapse one minute here to get to this result immediately. Now we can make adjustments to this image before saving it directly through the VFB by clicking the show corrections control icon. Expand the exposure rollout and enable it. Highlight Burn controls the highlights and the hotspots, so I'll bring it down to about 0.7. Expand Color Balance and also enable it. Here I can adjust the color of my shadows, for example, to cool them off a little bit. You can of course set your render as desired. Now I'll add a curve to punch up the image a little bit, like so, and then I'll collapse the corrections control. And of course, to save your image, simply click the floppy disk icon, and here we are. A lovely earbud that you can hear just by looking at it. Thanks for joining us on this introductory quick start video on using V-Ray for Rhino.